Welcome to another great episode of Memphians on the Move by Methodist Lebanon Healthcare. On behalf of Greater Memphis Chamber, we will highlight people and companies who offer a forward lean approach to the growth of our great city. We will share a closer look at what makes Memphis attractive for economic growth, innovation and expansion, as well as talent retention, tourism, education, good health and great business. Each year, millions of Americans are impacted by hunger and food insecurity as defined by the USDA. According to studies conducted by Feeding America, over 900,000 people struggle with hunger in every county and congressional district in Tennessee, and nearly 300,000 are children. With very focused and intentional missions to end hunger locally in the communities that we call home, both Mid-South Food Bank and Kroger are two companies making significant impacts in this common race. We will talk with Victor Smith, president of Kroger's Delta Division, about sustainability in the market and its Zero Hunger, Zero Waste initiative. But first, Estella Mayhew Greer, president and CEO of Mid-South Food Bank, is here to shed light on Memphis's charge to make sure that no child or person goes to sleep hungry. Estella, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Stephanie. Thank you for joining us. There are a lot of exciting details in the pipeline for Mid-South Food Bank, but before we unveil them, can you help us understand a historical snapshot of how Mid-South Food Bank came to be in Memphis? Well, first of all, we were founded by MIFA, and people still confuse us with MIFA. We were a program of MIFA in 1981, and then we became a part of Feeding America, which is the nation's network of food banks. There are over 200 food banks across the nation that are in partnership with that, and an independent 501c3 in 1988. And during that period, Feeding America signed a territory to us. So we're not just the Memphis Food Bank, but Mid-South Food Bank, because we serve 31 counties throughout the Mid-South. We have 18 counties in North Mississippi, 12 here in Tennessee, and of course, Crittenden County in West Memphis, Arkansas. So with all of the areas that you service, how do you serve and through what programs? Well, it would not be possible without our partner agencies. I think we've always been in the forefront of collaboration with other nonprofit organizations. We provide the food to them for them to provide to food insecure individuals at no charge. And we have partner agencies throughout those counties. But in the areas that are underserved, we're able to get food to people who need it through our mobile pantry program, which is one of our recent programs. But our focus is on feeding families, and we do that with our partnership with our partner agencies and the mobile pantry, and of course, feeding children, which we work through that with our Kids Cafe program, our backpack program, and our Healthy School Pantries program. And our most recent program is Feeding Seniors, where we distribute food directly to seniors and prepare grocery boxes specifically for seniors for our partner agencies to distribute. Wow, that's, that's great. Oftentimes, the severity of hunger is not realized until it's witnessed firsthand. Unfortunately, the out of sight, out of mind scenario comes into play. What are some misconceptions that we can address to help educate against the fight to end hunger? Well, the most important one is that hunger impacts every zip code in our service area. And people are surprised when I say that, but the person that sits next to you in church on Sunday morning, uh, the child is in class with your student, uh, with your child, the person who is working alongside you may be struggling with food insecurity. And particularly here in our area where transportation is such a big problem, People are making tough choices between, am I gonna get my car fixed or get gas or buy food? And food is something that's often left off the table. The recent stats from Feeding America's hunger survey shows that 40% of the people that we provide food to here in the Mid-South are people who are working every day, struggling to make ends meet. More with Mid-South Food Bank President and CEO Estella Mayhew Greer when we come back. Would you rather go to the beach or to the mountains? <laughs> I would rather go to the mountains. I'd rather go to the beach. Favorite movie genre? Comedy. For sure. What's your favorite? I love a good action film. <laughs> Night Owl. Early Bird. Basketball. Football. Pancakes. Waffles. <laughs> Have you ever had a medical procedure? Yes. I had a kidney transplant at Methodist. Wow. I was not expecting that. Today is my nine-month anniversary of my kidney transplant. No place I'd rather be when it came to get my transplant but at Methodist. 
Since 1990, in the fall of September, something phenomenal has been taking place in Memphis, Tennessee, and it all revolves around one special football game, the Southern Heritage Classic, presented by FedEx. It's homecoming for many of us fans. The Classic Weekend is full of fun, with music from chart-hopping musical acts, tailgate parties, and some of the best marching bands in the country. And of course, the game between two of college football's fiercest rivals, Tennessee State and Jackson State. The Southern Heritage Classic, it's a celebration. Begin a new and exciting career as a truck driver with training at Olympic Career Training Institute. Get your Class A CDL truck driving license in just four weeks and starting salary making up to $50,000 a year. Must be 21 years of age and have a valid driver's license. The class is also background friendly and job placement assistance is available. Class is filling up fast. Secure your enrollment. Don't wait. Call today. 901-350-6284. Olympic Career Training Institute. South Food Bank feeds families through its Hunger's Hope and Mobile Food Pantry. Hunger's Hope distributes food and other groceries through their network of partner agencies. Food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, youth programs, senior programs, rehabilitation and residential centers. The Mobile Pantry provides direct distribution of fresh produce, frozen meat, bakery, dairy and other perishable and non-perishable foods to underserved communities. We're back to take a closer look at Mid-South Food Bank's Kids Cafe, Food for Kids Backpacks, and Healthy School Pantries. Estella, may we start with Kids Cafe? Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that program? Well, the program started to provide nutritious food to children after school. And we started with three Kids Cafes. Uh, we have two that are located in Boys and Girls Club and one in Girls, Inc. We never expanded that program because Shelby County Schools started providing after-school meals. And so to better utilize our resources, we continued with the three that we've started. These are home-cooked meals, and the children also get a nutrition education lesson. So we're not just giving them food, but we're teaching them how to eat healthy. We're exposing them to new foods. We, uh, at one time, had red pears. And many of the children had never seen red pears before, so we coaxed them into eating fresh fruit. And when we prepare meals for them, we often give them that fresh produce with recipes to take home. Great. Can you tell us about the Food for Kids backpacks design? What are some of the contents and how are they distributed? Well, the Food for Kids backpack program started when uh, Dr. McDonald, who was uh, superintendent of Jubilee Schools, came to the food bank and she was concerned that so many children were returning to school on Mondays hungry and they had to feed them before they could start teaching them and so we started that backpack program for children in elementary school and they get six meals in a backpack to take home over the weekend six nutritious meals we have fruit vegetables shelf stable products entrees milk juice because we know that some of the children may be going to homes with no utilities so all the products are shelf stable and can be eaten without having to heat them but we have basic menus telling them what to eat and when we use whole grain cereal not the sugary cereals and we make sure that it's a well balanced meal for them so they have breakfast lunch and dinner for Saturday and Sunday so they don't return to school on Monday hungry this brings us to the healthy school pantries. What is the overall objective behind them? The purpose of the healthy school pantry was we realized that when children got in middle school and high school, they didn't want to be seen taking home a backpack box. And so we actually started the program at Bolton High School where the Honor Society ran a pantry and the guidance counselor, if she identified a child that was food insecure, the parents could come in while everyone is in class and get a box and uh, no one would know but we expanded the program and uh, we're at Carver High School now and that pantry is not just serving the students but the students are serving the surrounding community of Carver High School 
we were fortunate enough to get a grant from United Healthcare that allows us to provide them with refrigeration and freezer space in the healthy school pantries so that they can provide the perishable product, the protein, the fresh produce, and milk to those who they're providing services to. We do have, uh, we've expanded to colleges as well because we realize that a lot of college students are food insecure. So we have a pantry at Dyersburg State Community College and one here at the University of Memphis. Now, Estella, how can Memphians get involved as volunteers? They can simply visit our website at midsouthfoodbank.org. There's a volunteer application, and I encourage them to do that because our new facility is an awesome place to volunteer. And we'll have our grand opening for that facility on July the 11th. We're excited about this facility because it's going to help us distribute more nutritious food to the more than 380,000 people in our service area who on any given day don't get enough to eat. Well, thank you and congratulations, Estella, on many levels. You are certainly a Memphian on the move. Log on to MidSouthFoodBank.org and learn more about how to volunteer or even donate. Stay with us. We'll be back after a message from Epicenter, the hub of entrepreneurship of the greater Memphis region. Today is my grand opening. Just the start of a new beginning for Big Moments and Grannies. Big Mamas and Grannies is actually my big mama and my granny. Everything that they instilled in me, I want to give to others. We specialize in Southern Soul to American tradition with a Cajun and Creole twist. You have to eat the food. That chicken salad is remarkable. The macaroni and cheese is literally the best thing you've ever put into your mouth. My favorite food is macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Kanaka represents where passion and perseverance meets resources. Memphis has tons of talented people with gifts. They just don't have the resources to fund those gifts. So I think Tanaka's story represents what Memphis can be. Pathway Lending is one of those organizations that provide the necessary financing to women-owned businesses and black-owned businesses, even veterans as well. We're in a place that we can provide financing necessary to grow a community from within. Pathway is a really important partner because they're nationally recognized experts in the distribution of capital to emerging businesses. Together, we solve a very significant challenge for entrepreneurs in Memphis. Everything that you see in here today, the funding from Pathway Lending allowed me to do that. This has really allowed my vision and my dreams to really come true. A lot of times, because you're a woman, you're seeing unable to do. So I've always had that determination of nothing can stop me. I'm going to keep pushing. I wish that everybody in the city of Memphis knew about Epicenter and Pathway Lending. If I'd never gotten a phone call from Epicenter, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't. In 1883, Barney Kroger invested his life savings of $372 to open a grocery store at 66 Pearl Street in downtown Cincinnati. The son of a merchant, he ran his business with a simple motto, be particular, never sell anything you would not want yourself. It was a credo that would serve the Kroger company well over the next 130 years as the supermarket business evolved into a variety of formats aimed at satisfying the ever-changing needs of shoppers. Joining me now is Victor Smith, president of Kroger's Delta Division. Victor, welcome to Memphians on the Move. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I'm really pleased to be here. And let me also welcome you to Memphis. I understand you are from California, so please tell us a little about yourself and your move to Memphis. It's been a really good move. You know, I'm from Southern California, as you stated. I was actually born back in Biloxi, Mississippi, so I do have a little bit of ties to the Mid-South. Uh, but we've been in Southern California since I was about four years old, so quite a little while. And uh, I started with a company called Ralph's out in Southern California, which is a division of the Kroger Company, and uh, been with the company for 36 years. So I worked my way up from various clerk positions to uh, vice president of merchandising out at Ralph's, and I'm really pleased to be the president of Kroger's Delta Division here in Memphis. All right. Well, with nearly 2,800 stores in 35 states and annual sales of more than $155 billion. What is the local capacity of the Kroger Company? That's a great question. Here in the Memphis area, we have 36 stores. 
Uh, and throughout the Kroger Delta Division, we have 101 stores. In Memphis, there are about 6,200 associates and over 16,000 associates here in the Delta Division. The Delta Division is represented in five states. We have stores, obviously, here in Tennessee, in Mississippi, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Missouri. In today's climate, everyone is busy. So, Victor, tell me how Kroger is working to provide convenience for people like me who are always on the go. That is a great question. I'm really glad you asked it. Because in today's environment, convenience is really, really key. And time is just about as equivalent as money. So what we've done at the Kroger Company is offer some things like pickup, formerly click lists, where you can order your groceries at line from at work or at home and pick them up anytime you decide to pick them up in the time slot you select. We also have an option called scan, bag, and go in our stores. Eleven stores have that represented in the Memphis area today, where you could actually take a RAD or a handheld device in our stores and scan and bag your groceries as you shop to save yourself time at the checkout. Uh, additionally, we have uh, delivery service where you can order your groceries and in as little as an hour uh, have your groceries delivered to you uh, right to your door. And then there's Kroger Ship where you can go to Kroger.com and order some of our non-perishable items and have them delivered directly to your door. So we believe those options for convenience are really, really relevant and really make a difference for our busy customers like yourself. Okay, so tell us about Restock Kroger. Well, Restock Kroger is a big plan to really enhance shareholder value. Uh, it also is designed to allow that our industry analysts or that analyze our sector uh, and any investors to have reassurance that Kroger has the ability to win in this space even though it's changing so rapidly. So the Restock Kroger plan is designed to last for three years, and it's a four-pronged plan. It's talking about redefining the grocery customer experience, partnering for customer value, really developing the talent inside our company, and then living our purpose. And you know our purpose is to feed the human spirit. Well, when we come back, we will talk more with Kroger Delta's president, Victor Smith, about Kroger's purpose to feed the human spirit.
Kroger's purpose is to feed the human spirit. So tell me, how are you putting those words into action? That's a great question, and there are a lot of ways that we're putting those words into action. You know, we believe that feeding the human spirit is this opportunity to uplift our customers, to have them feel better when they leave our stores than they did when they came in. Uh, I know there's a good example of an opportunity we had with your son just a little bit ago, Mr. Sam. Uh, he has a shopping cart that he wants to utilize, and you guys shopped at one of our stores that didn't have them, and he interfaced with the store management team, and they did all they could to make sure that they could get away to get new carts ordered so that he could have the carts that he wanted when he shops. Those are the ways that we, uh, some of the ways, or one of the ways that we feed the human spirit, make folks feel a little bit better. Additionally, we want to make sure that the stores are great, that they're full, fresh, and friendly, so that you can find everything you want every, every time you shop. When you do that, you're uplifted, you're, you're saving time, you know, you're on the right track it, it, with the things that you have to get accomplished during the course of the day. We're partnering with uh, partners like the Mid-South Food Bank. We're getting after our Zero Hunger, Zero Waste initiative. All of those are ways that we believe we feed the human spirit and differentiate ourselves from our competitive set. Well, I know that with feeding the human spirit, Sam appreciates having those carts there for you. So uh, how is Kroger redefining the grocery experience? Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand with some of the things we've talked about before, the, the, the digital and technology with your ability to order and get groceries in a lot of different ways, running stores that are really outstanding, full, fresh, and friendly, uh, really having great facilities uh, with regard to how our stores look. And speaking of which, we're going on an initiative here in the Memphis area in our Frazier community, our Raleigh community, and our Whitehaven community, where we're going to invest just short of $2 million in revamping and refreshing those stores. Because we believe all of our customers uh, deserve a really, really sharp shopping experience when they're in our stores. I have one ask for the community, and that is please support these stores after we make these investments. And let's have everybody ensure that we look out for these stores and keep them in a crime-free uh, situation because all of those stores should be really, really safe for anybody to shop uh, at any time. So when we do that, we get the customer support, we'll be here for the long term. Now Kroger is the country's largest traditional grocer. Let's talk about Kroger's local efforts to stay competitive. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand with what we just talked about earlier. Running great stores, full, fresh, friendly, uh, really great facilities. We're priced really, really well, and we really want to differentiate ourselves by the things that we do in the community and the offering that we have for our customers. So we feel like we're right in the, in the wheelhouse for being very, very competitive here. We'll return with Victor Smith after a note from the desk of Chamber President Beverly Robertson. In response to the resounding voices of both job seekers and employers, and the express need to bridge the gap between talent and opportunities, the Greater Memphis Chamber will convene regional stakeholders from the workforce ecosystem on October 22nd and 23rd with a major workforce summit entitled Upskill 901 with goals of upskilling 10,000 individuals with technical and essential skills and exposing them to high demand careers and direct employment opportunities, we will do this over a 12 to 36 month period. We're hosting this two day summit, which will include breakfast and lunch, keynote addresses from experts, breakout sessions, and CEO roundtables on day one, and a preparation meets opportunity career fair on day two. Here attendees will be provided multiple resources from on-site registration for programs to employer screenings for open positions. For more information on Upskill 901, the Workforce Summit, visit memphischamber.com. Would you rather go to the beach or to the mountains? <laughs> I would rather go to the mountains. I'd rather go to the beach. Favorite movie genre? Comedy. For sure. What's your favorite? I love a good action film. <laughs> Night Owl. Early Bird. Basketball. Football. Pancakes. <laughs> Have you ever had a medical procedure? Yes, I had a kidney transplant at Methodist. Wow, I was not expecting that. Today is my nine month anniversary of my kidney transplant. No place I'd rather be when it came to get my transplant but at Methodist. The Memphis branch was the second of three regional branches established by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, one of 12 independent reserve banks that, along with the Board of Governors in Washington, D.C., make up the Federal Reserve System, the central banking system of the United States. 
the Federal Reserve promotes a healthy economy and financial stability. To do that, it performs five important roles. One, keep inflation low and stable. Two, foster a healthy banking system. Three, provide payment services to financial institutions. Four, support the U.S. Treasury's financial operations. And five, promote financial literacy and economic education. The regional branch offices help the St. Louis Fed fulfill its mission and serve as the voice of Main Street when monetary policy decisions are made. They also allow for a more efficient collection of information and deeper relationships through staff involvement in the local economies, producing a level of insight not possible from hundreds of miles away. I immediately felt something different. You know, it's loving care because loving is living up to their name. It's complete care with medical, dental, behavior health, and pharmacy right in my community. Loving care for your body, mind, and spirit. Call 901-842-3160 or log on to ChristCommunityHealth.org for an appointment. Christ Community Health Services, healing with soul. So Victor Kroeber is a staple in Memphis with its robust number of locations and community initiatives. How are you supporting diversity initiatives? We understand that diversity is important and actually diversity is one of our core values. And many people may not know that we're a member of the Billion Dollar Roundtable, which is an organization that recognizes companies that have spent at least a billion dollars with minority and women-owned businesses. We support minority and women-owned businesses here in Memphis as well. Companies like the Pie Folks and Makeda's Cookies. We hope our customers really patronize this, these groups so that they can absolutely be successful in our stores. Victor, thank you so much for sharing those plans and your time with us. To find out more, please visit Kroger.com. We will see you next time on Greater Memphis Chamber Presents Memphians on the Move by Methodist Laboner Healthcare. I'm your host, Stephanie White. Thanks for watching.